try to ignore the road noise, but this is Houdini chicken. Houdini chicken likes to escape. awesome podcast on location. The fact that I am completely dark right now, but do you see that sunline right there? In about 10 minutes, it's going to peek over the roof that I'm of the building I'm sitting in front of, and I'm going to be blind. I have a hat. We might move. My hair is a mess. I just woke up, and I rushed to get this done before I have to go to work, because even though it's only been a week, since I last podcast, I actually have a lot to show you guys, and I'm going out of town next week, so sorry about the rockiness. I am on a uneven surface in the table, and I picked up my mug. So I'm going out of town next week on vacation, and I won't get a chance to record, and I wanted to show you all my progress on the projects that I have and my acquisitions, because you all know I'm a wool pig, and there's always acquisitions to be shown. Um... Flying no show notes again. I am sitting at our pool. So we have a, we live in a HOA community like thing. So we have a community pool and it sits up on a hill and you look down at the lake. So there's the lake and I live right there. You can't see it, but that's where I live. So I have to drive over here. There's not. I wish these roads in our HO, in our little community, connected, but none of them do. So, you have to leave one gate and then drive down the road and then come in another gate. Anyway, y'all don't care about that. Y'all care about knitting. One second, my phone's ringing. Sorry, that was my doctor calling about my medicine. So, where was I? What was I talking about? the HOA, the lame HOA that I live in, in my pool, my awesome pool. I do love having a pool. You guys don't care about that, that's what I was saying. I was going to show you some knitting. So I have, I feel like I've done a lot of knitting, but I haven't made a lot of progress on any one thing because of course it's procrastination and I have to work on all the things. So I did finish, I have a hoe. That you can't see. I finished this sock. I showed you guys last week I had done my first fish lips kiss heel which I love and I am a convert for sure and I knit the rest of the leg and did the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off since I did a toe up sock on this one. I really like toe up socks. I'm thinking toe up Fish Lips Kiss Seal is my new Magic Loop preferred knitting sock method. I have another one currently on the go, another sock. So as soon as I got done with this one, I was like, yeah, that's okay. We'll set this one aside and I have one vanilla stripey sock done. I don't need another. I'll have a mate eventually, but I'm having too much fun casting on all the socks right now. So while this one needs a mate, it will be a while. It will be until I want to work on another vanilla sock, and that's not right now, today, so. I love it though, I love the yarn. It is Wooly Wonka fibers. I love how the stripes are different on how they alternate. You can't see that because my lighting is horrendous right now, but, so we'll stop talking about it. But the bag and yarn were both a gift from my friend Sonia. Hi! 
I have one of the best things that I love about podcasting is all the friends that I've made with my viewers. So it just, it makes me so happy to pop on Instagram or Ravelry and to see a message from one of you guys and to chat with y'all about what's going on in our lives. So another whip that I've been working on, I told y'all I have converted to the Fish Lips Kiss Heal Love. This is my work sock, so I try to work on this only while I'm at work. That way once I have a pair, I can say, oh, like my work made me into knit socks. I did another Fish Lips Kiss Heal on this one. And I did this pretty much from memory. I had to look up the boomerang section, but I knit this on the Cirques. So on the tiny Cirques, I knit this whole heel almost from memory, and it was only my second time. So when they say the fish lips kiss is easy, it's so easy. I don't know why I couldn't wrap my brain around the twin knit stitch and twin purl stitch, but if you have someone to sit down and show you, I highly recommend sitting down with somebody because as soon as I did, I watched the videos a hundred times and I couldn't figure it out. So this sock is the pebbles pattern by the amazing rock star Mina Phillip. She has the Beyond Vanilla sock pattern, and I really enjoy this texture. And Trilla likes these too, so I think I'm going to end up knitting these for her. And this is my unofficial West 7th wool knit along. I told y'all a lot of our knit night ladies purchase the same colorway. And if you happen to have this Cascade Heritage print number 33, if you were curious, I'd love you to cast on and in along with us. You can find the details in the Yarn Shop podcast, or not podcast group, but uh, Ravelry group. Uh, West 7th Wool has a Ravelry group that I created a thread for this unofficial knit along. So I think it's perfect for summer because it reminds me of the water and the sand and clouds and it's, it's perfect beach knitting. It's beach knitting. And that's where we're going next week, to the beach. I'm not going to work on this sock. This is my work whip. It's my work sock. I have the Christmas in July cow is going strong in the group. I've had a couple of people post, and Michael has people posting in his group and knitting along so I am doing a Christmas knit miss in July knit along or make along so if you crochet if you so whatever if you can make it Christmas themed I'd love to see what you what you're making I started out making the Tulsi socks by the I totally tagged the wrong person on Instagram I tagged, did I just say the wool barn and did I say the sweater co? Because I tagged the wool barn. There's two different socks that I want to knit and they're, they're friends and they test knit each other's socks and I tagged the wrong person. These are by the wool club, tool size socks. So I talked about these last week and how I cast on my yarn that I got on our vacation to New Mexico. We went skiing at Christmas and I thought even though this isn't Christmas yarn, it's Christmas themed and I will knit those socks. So here's how far I got. You can see they're not on the needles. I just didn't really like how they were working up on this pattern. I really like this yarn. I love this pattern. I just don't love this yarn with this pattern. So, I ripped them out, and I think this will be a good vanilla sock pattern, because look how, that's just, I like that. So, I put those on hiatus, and I started looking through my stash, because again, I said, I want to knit these socks, and I used this yarn as heels and toes for my fine and dandy socks which is hedgehog fibers and colorway villain is it going to show up i 
think this is gonna be perfect. I don't know yet. I also, for my featherweight cardigan, this is yarn from that. I thought, remember I wanted to use this as the collar on my featherweight and I kept talking about how well it matched. So I'm gonna use this as toes. Toes, maybe heels for the Tulsi socks. And I've cast them on, I have a ton of needles in here. I cast them on last night. <laughs> so I don't even think this qualifies as a mustache. It's again a Hitler, you guys. I've gotta lay off the little the little mini stashes. So in theme with the knit miss in July, knit along. I decided that since I can't come up with a Christmas themed yarn or a Christmas themed pattern. I'll just use my Christmas themed project bag. <laughs> that makes it Christmas themed. So if you can justify the Christmas theme guys, then I'd love to see what, you, what you've got. I wanted to show you guys the giveaways. I'm gonna reach over you right quick. I have to dig in the box behind you. Talks amongst yourselves, don't mind the ride. Terribly sorry about that. So, again, Andre Sue Knits donated this amazing skein of yarn for the giveaway. Thank you, Andy. And it has, I don't know if it's going to show up really well, so it's mostly a creamy white with some very dark reds some blacks and grays i really like this skein of yarn andy does amazing work on everything she touches see here comes the sun it's going to wash me out i might move my my chair back um another giveaway prize that's come came from my friend melissa over by nitty by nature and she sent, dropping stuff here, not one, not two, but three little stitch marker sets. So we've got the Christmas tree one, and there's her shop info. If you want to go check it out, she has a million stitch markers, and they're so cute and amazing. And this one has a snowflake and a bell. I love the jingly ones. And this one, Atrella really liked because it's a nutcracker. My husband collects nutcrackers. And it's got a little red bell. I love it. So thank you. I was gonna do these as individual giveaways for, or pair one with the yarn and then do two as a part of the whips thread I'll give away I'll pick two winners from that thread and then when I do a finished objects thread which I need to create it's the end of the month I have knit nothing for my own knit along I will do the yarn and the stitch marker well we got to do a matching one the Christmas tree the yarn and the stitch marker set will go to the finished object winner so I hope you guys are having fun knitting along. If you're knitting anything, a Christmas present in July, that counts, guys. That counts. Some other things Melissa sent me, since I'm on the Melissa topic right now. She recently did a giveaway on her page for this little Notions that was made by Steel City Stitcher. Do you guys hear my stomach growling? Because I haven't eaten. Look at it, it's my little peppermints. And she put one of her Christmas trees on there. Melissa, I love this. And Roberta, Roberta, you made it. But Melissa got it for me. And I really love the fabric on the inside, it's green. And then Melissa sent me a bunch of little markers too. So this beautiful mermaid. I got a sheep. And then this whole collection. So we got a lotus flower, which I think is, yeah, I think is her 
logo. Yeah, Amber, move your finger. A friend one. I love the little dog bone. <laughs> and a fairy. So thank you so much, Melissa. That was such a sweet package to get. And here's the card for Roberta for these little Notion, Notion pouches. So I've been using my little Notions, my little Christmas Notions pouch, and my Christmas bag. Since that's about as Christmas as I can. Speaking of Christmas, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram. I didn't introduce myself at all. Here, I'm going to stop it right here and then come back and introduce myself. Hello, guys. Welcome. Was that too cheesy? So this is the Yarn Junkie Podcast. My name is Amber. I live in Texas. Um, I'm completely random and all over the place. I should always have pro podcast notes, and I don't. Speaking of Christmas, though, since I just talked about my Christmas in July, knit along. I took my girls and two of their little friends to a water park this week on Wednesday, Tuesday. We went on Tuesday. <sighs> Though this particular water park I went to is considered, or they, they are known to be a religious water park. They have scripture on their like floats and stuff and... I don't mind. I'm not I'm not religious, but I'm not I don't knock people's religion or don't take my kids somewhere because it might have a scripture somewhere. Um but the thing was it was Christmas in July. Now, you might think that I love Christmas since I'm hosting a Christmas in July knit along, but I do in fact not like Christmas. Christmas is my least favorite holiday out of them all. Christmas is just, I mean, if you've been watching my podcast a while, you know from my December, month of December was just not the happiest for me. My mom passed away early December. My dad lost his house a couple days after Christmas. Um, when I was a kid, Christmas just never was, I lost a couple relatives near the holidays. Um, it just never, I never liked Christmas. I was never like, oh yeah, it's Christmas. And so when we went to this water park and it's Christmas in July and everyone's wearing water, like Santa hats, which was fine. It was decorated like Christmas. That's fine. I had to listen to Christian Christmas music all day long, you guys. It was... And again, if Christmas Christian music is your most favorite thing in the world, I am not trying to be offensive, but it is literally my own personal version of hell. I don't like water parks on the best of days, but my kids are absolutely nuts for them. And you know, you sacrifice yourself as a parent and you make do. I don't like being wet all day. I don't like when the wind comes through and then you're wet and then you're cold and it's just not an enjoyable experience. Kids get water. It's dangerous. You know, people aren't paying attention to their kids and they're like going to drown and it just induces anxiety and kids are whining and parents are tired so they're like not dealing with their child whining very well and they're being snappy which water parks are not my favorite. But my kids love going, so every year I sacrifice and I go to a water park. Why did it have to be Christmas in July? Anyway, you guys, you guys, that, that was not fun. That was definitely not fun. So, I, on back onto the knitting, I put my Telsa socks cast on in my little camping project bag because next week, on Sunday I am so happy I feel like a jerk though I don't want to say too much because I don't know if she's gonna talk about it at all but I had a really awesome really cool friend that I admire a lot contact me and say she's moving across country and could I put her up for a few days and I was like yeah oh my god I totally can we won't be here we won't, not only will we not be here, but our house is going to have a contractor in it, and I can't even 
have my house open to her. So I'm the worsted. I'm the absolute worsted and you know who you are and I feel like a jerk and I wish I was meeting you but I'd already asked for the days off and the kids are looking, you know, we had we planned the vacation and I just wasn't thinking about which days. I wish, I wish it would have worked out. That sucks. My foot itches because I have a million ant bites. So these are the socks I'm taking on my camping trip. The Telsai socks and I was also gifted the new arabesque socks, arabesque, I'm probably saying that completely wrong, by the Sweater Co. So I just did her fine and dandy socks. We did a knit along with Jacqueline, if you remember from Brooklyn Knit Folks. And as a thank you, Vera gifted me her pattern. And not only did she gift me a copy, but she gifted me two copies, one to give away on the podcast. I've already created a Ravelry, or a thread in the group asking it's the arabesque sock pattern and I had to look that up because I didn't know what it meant and it's actually a ballet technique that an arabesque is a term used in ballet for lines clean lines and it also means look look up the, the definition I should have written it down I should have project uh, prod podcast notes but I do not um, so my prompt in the thread, since it's a ballet term, I thought it would be fitting to ask what your favorite type of music is, or your favorite song. Whatever you want to share music-wise, I, I just thought that would be a lot of fun. I've been listening to a lot of music lately. My own personal music preferences vary. I really, really love the Beatles. I don't think I need to say that. I have a daughter named Prudence because I love the Beatles. Um, I also love Sublime. I love a bunch of music. If you really want to know, I can do like a little a list of what's in my download playlist and, you know, just what I typically listen to. But I was looking online because I thought, oh, I need to knit these socks in like this soft pink color. It's going to be beautiful because it's ballet and it just reminded me of ballet slippers and it's a beautiful lace pattern which intimidates me but Vera said that it's intuitive so I'm going to try it. I'm feeling brave. I'm going to try it. And I was looking through my stash. I wasn't even looking through my stash. I was putting something up and I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the socks. And I caked it last night at midnight. And it is Cat's Kettle. Where is that spot of sun? It's directly in my face. It's Cat's Kettle. Look. Hurrah! In colorway Old Lace and Arsenic. Old Lace, you guys, for lace socks. So you won't be able to see it. But in here are little shots of kind of rust and yellow. So it's mostly this color pink that's showing up really good, like a fleshy, tonal pink. See, it's kind of flesh colored, but it's got these shots of awesomeness in it. So that's going to be my socks. Here's Kat's tag. Arsenic and Old Lace Matte Sock, 4 plaque fingering, 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon, 100, 438 yards. So, those are my two sock whips that I'm going to take on. Oh, I'm taking three, three sock whips, I lied. Those are two of my sock whips I'm taking on the trip. We are going down to the coast. Did I say that? I don't think I did. We are taking an, about an eight-hour car ride to the coast of Texas, South Padre, and then when we come home, we're gonna go up through Houston and stop at NASA, the Space Museum, and take our kids because they love space. So another sock whip I'm gonna take in a new project bag because, you know, I have problems and I can't stop buying project bags, but I've had my eye on this one for a minute Studio in the Green is the maker, and I have heard really, really good things about her bags, and they're a little spindy, 
um, for a sock size bag. But you guys, the way this is made, so on both sides it has yarn guides. In the middle, it's, so let me put this back in so you guys can see. So it's got a divider. It's divided right in the middle so you can have two sock whips on the go. And then you have your notions built right in in contrasting fabric so it's the outside and it it's seriously not knocking any of the other bag makers that I've bought from this bag has the most detail and is the best made I mean it just work it's just so much work went into this you can tell and I love how it sits it's completely flat on the bottom, so it sits nice and open when you're working out of it. It doesn't collapse at all, even though it's not interfaced. It's totally smushable. Like, look at this. Look how tiny it is. Isn't that cute? So, I needed this bag. No shame. No shame. I am knitting. Don't have a picture. I'm sure you know what it is. The Jelly Roll socks. Jelly Roll? Jelly Rolls? Um, it's the same designer that did the Row City Rollers, and this is my leftover yarn from my Exploration Station. This is Edison Bulb from Mad Tosh, and this is Jinx Cancun, Jinx yarn in colorway Cancun. This will be the interior part, and this will be the exterior part. And I was thinking about doing a reverse, like doing one pair blue outside and then one pair yellow outside. We'll see. And these are for a Trella. Knitting these for a Trella and I'll probably knit me a Trella and Prudence each a pair of those eventually, you know, because I have to knit all the socks. And in this little thing I have DPNs, my Tuft Woolens lotion. I love this. And my Snips. So I just ordered more of her hand balm because it is the bomb. I love it. So this is another sock whip that I'm taking on the trip. Now I will show you guys. I've saved the best for last, basically. I have gotten so far on this, but I still have so far to go. So, I have two sleeves. I left my ends because when I knit my other sweater, after I washed it, I wished I could add just a little bit to it or take away. I can't remember which. And I couldn't find my ends because I'd already wove them in, so I just left it. But this time, I'm leaving my ends loose until after I wash it. That way if I need to take away some knitting or add some knitting, I can just very quickly discern where my end is and go from there. But I will put it on even though it's like already 90 degrees out here. I'm not even joking, not even a little bit. I could probably look at my phone, but I'm not connected to the internet here. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot, I can tell you that, especially sitting in the sun. Look at it, you guys. Oh my god! So I'm still wearing my pajamas. My pajamas do not match. Try not to judge. Try not to judge. I can feel you judging. Look at it! So I have two sleeves. I was here last week. So I knit all of that, you guys. All of that beautiful sleeve I knit. And it was hard to get through. I was rewarding myself big time with chocolate. I was like, okay, you knit about a, two inches. Have some chocolate. That's a long way, you guys. It's a long arm. So, two sleeves, a body. Now I just need a collar, and then I'll be done. So this is the Featherweight by Hannah Fettig. It is knit in fingering weight yarn. It's Madeline Tosh twist light 
and colorway cactus flower. My ring just snagged my sweater. <sighs> I'm never wearing this ring again if it ruins my sweater. <laughs> Relationship over. Do not tear up my knitting. So I, I will love it when it's done, but right now it's a total slog and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the yarn, I'm sick of the project. My coffee is so cold. Explain that to me. It's hot as Hades out here, and my coffee goes cold like that. Don't understand it. Another acquisition I had to get that I'll show you right quick. Same maker, Studio on the Green. I got the bag and this because I, I'm a sucker for DPN cozies, even though DPNs aren't really what I like to knit with anymore. Still like to get those. And I was reading that these are good for circulars too. We'll see about that. I have a set right here. Someone told me you can just put them in here. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Anyway, because I'm totally random, I'll keep going. What else do I have to show you guys? I did a lot of knitting on this too, a lot, and I love it. This is my favorite thing knitting that I'm knitting right now. <gasps> we have a yarn emergency. My notions is snagged. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. Look what is happening. Okay, we need to fix this. Oh, it came loose. It turned it loose. Oh my goodness, it pulled it. Okay, crisis averted. So sorry. I'm sure y'all understand. We were like having a crisis. So, oh my goodness, look how much she knit. So I was here last week. Yeah, this thing is knitting itself. It helps that I'm kind of small. And this is very just straight knitting. You knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row. It's a paid for pattern, so I won't say too much. A beginner could do this, I feel like. I don't know, I haven't gotten to the shaping yet. But you're just doing some slight decreases on either side. And knitting, purling, knitting, purling, knitting, purling. And switching yarns. So I carried my yarn up the side. Because I ain't got time to weave in a hundred ends. And I'm seaming it anyway, so I think it will be fine. Right? Right? In case you don't know what I'm knitting, it is the Socko Stripes by Pam Allen. I said that right. And I am using Quince & Co. Sparrow, which is their fingering weight linen base. And when I first started working with it, I was like, oh, this is, this is strange. But as soon as I got a, about an inch knit, I was like, wow, this is really strange. So strange. Did y'all see me just spit? I did. Um, it's really exciting and different feeling than anything I've knit. I love the needles I'm using. I was using carbons at first. I was not enjoying using those, and so I switched to these Cubics Rosewood, and I had to size down my needles always, because that's what I do. And here, this was all, so you get, when you buy the yarn, it comes like this, and it's 168 yards. And the first two, I hand wound, because my, yarn winder is kind of finicky and sometimes it likes to throw balls off. So I took my other balls to knit night last night and I was going to wind them on their apparatus because it's wooden and I felt like it would hold it. But then I almost wish I would have hand wound it because look, it's like, it's like twine almost the way it 
So I am going to rewind this by hand. I just this is gonna get messy and I don't want it to not. This stuff is like cobwebs. You heard a Trello say that on the last episode because I was trying to wind this one and it was just it says fingering weight, but I really feel like it's a very light, very light fingering. It's gonna be perfect. Linen, nice airy linen top for summer. Because hello, I live in Texas where summer lasts six, seven months out of the year. <laughs> I'm not even joking a little bit. It's so funny to hear. I love my Canadian podcasters and they're probably my favorite to watch. And they're already talking about winter and getting ready for fall knits. And I'm sitting here going, uh, winter's still four months away. Because it is, it really is. So this is another thing that I will definitely probably work on, definitely probably work on a lot on our road trip because it's so easy. Socks and this is what I'm feeling like. I'm really hoping I can be done with the ribbing on this before we leave, but that's not going to happen. So that's coming with this too. Another thing that's coming with this, because you have to have options. I can't just take four sock whips, a sweater, and a shirt. That's not enough. For a week, I'm taking this project bag, because hello, we're going to the Space Museum. I need this project bag to go with us. And in here is my talisman, which I thought is also a perfect thing to work on on a road trip. Because I know that I said I didn't, read, didn't want to read y'all this last time, but Magical, safe, and full of good fortune, Talisman is a carefree crescent shawl inscribed with a similar simple star stitch. Traditional lore advises that a talisman should always be made by the hands of the one who intends to use it. By my reckoning, that, me that makes this shawl perfect for some selfish knitting. These cherished objects were often made to protect pil pilgrims on their journey. And it just so happens that Talisman makes wonderful travel knitting. The pattern has been designed, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I'm going on a journey. I need to knit a very simple, easy thing to knit. And it's in my space bag, so it's going. It's made the list, the knit list of the vacation. So that is all the knitting I have to show you, but I have some acquisitions, so I will be right back with those. Okay. And pausing, I went ahead and moved a little bit. So now I'm back in the shadows instead of in the bright sun. So last week, I actually forgot to show you guys my yarn shop, West 7th Wool in Fort Worth, is my local yarn shop, even though, again, I've said this a thousand times, I am not that local to Fort Worth in the worldly known way of local. Texas people like to drive. We drive a lot. It's no problem for me to drive an hour and a half to go to knit night. Yeah, about an hour and 20 minutes. 70 miles, 60 miles, something like that. Anyway, my local yarn store, because it is my local yarn store, was just featured in a magazine. And it's like a local to Fort Worth magazine called 76107. And they came in and took pictures and chatted with Amy, the owner of West 7th Wool, and they did a little feature, a business spotlight. So here's, here's Amy, cute Amy and her husband, and a few images from the shop, and here's my friend Carmen knitting on our twinsie socks. And then they took a picture of Knit Night. I am there. I am right there. Right there. Look at me. Same hat. So you can see, like, it's a very good mix of a bunch of different types of ladies. And sometimes men. Good lighting. And I was happy 
because I got my own picture. Look at me right there. Look at me, guys. And it says Amber Wallace sets up her, and that is I was kicking up yarn for my vitamin D. Look at me. Isn't that just the coolest? And there's Cat's feet. That's my friend Cat. She had just finished those socks, so they took a picture of her. Isn't that the coolest, you guys? I'm in a freaking magazine because of my knitting. What? So, yeah. That's not exactly acquisitions, but it is because she gave me this. This is my copy of my, my beautiful face in a magazine. I just thought that was the coolest thing, and so did my kids. They were like, Mom, oh my goodness, you're amazing. So, I also, what else did I do this week? Here comes the sun again. I didn't move my chair very far, I guess. So, I got, I pre-ordered this quite a while ago. I kind of forgot it was coming because I've ordered so much stuff lately. I thought, oh, that will never happen to me. I used to hear of this, forgetting I ordered stuff from people, and I'm like, how could you forget you ordered something? Guilty. I pre-ordered this. That's how you forget. You do a pre-order, and then you put it out of your head, and you don't think about it until it shows up in your mailbox, and you're surprised and excited and wowed. So Suburban Stitcher did a pre-order for these Alice in Wonderland project bags. Look at it. And I didn't even think about it. I mean, as soon as she listed them to Instagram, I went to her shop and and pre-ordered it. Her bags are really well made. My blue bonnet bag is also a Suburban Stitcher bag. And she did this really cool heart lining. She's got her strap and there's her tag. She actually has some stuff in her shop right now. Love this bag. I love the cat. He's my favorite. The Red Queen is a close second. And I also, this week, Cat's Kettle, Katrina, the wonderful, the amazing. Look at these cards. You can't, can you see that? It's orange and then it's teal. And it's so thick and amazing and beautiful. I love your cards, Cat. There's her information. She also posted to Instagram talking about her Halloween yarn club. And I went to her Etsy and I, I saw, oh, just one left? Just one left? So I didn't hesitate. I bought it and then they were sold out. So I literally got the last spot in the yarn club and it's my first club. So you get three skeins of yarn total and at first, she sends you a stitch marker. So I got the little card and a stitch marker this week. And the yarn shipments will start closer to Halloween. Because it's a Halloween yarn club. <laughs> Guys, I'm feeling ridiculous this morning. So I love these little hexagon ones. She had a couple in her shop, and I was going to get some, but now they're sold out. So I'll have to wait. Like I need more stitch markers. <laughs> Yes, I do. I need all the stitch markers. So another thing that I got this week, because I have no self-control whatsoever, the spinning box. I've talked about the spinning box on one of my very, very, very early podcasts because I bought one a year ago. And I really liked the things that I got. I just don't spin enough to justify getting one every month. So the deal with the spinning box is you... Just Google spinning box and it should come up, but you sign up for a newsletter basically and you get the notification emailed to you saying spinning boxes are ready for purchase. And you go to the website and you buy a box and then they ship it to you. And it's super cheap and the reason how, how they can keep it so inexpensive is they essentially contact Etsy sellers and say, we have this box, do you want to advertise your business? Send us a small sample, X number of samples, so we can put them in different boxes. And it's basically free advertising for that Etsy seller. Not free because they're, they're, it costs them their product, but it's an inexpensive way to advertise, I think is the idea behind it. 
I probably didn't say any of that very well. But it is $49, so I think it totals maybe $56 with shipping for a box. And I'm just going to go through and show you guys, this wasn't in there, what I got. And you also get to view it. So they do like a little YouTube video so you can preview what's in the box that way. If it's not your colors, if it's not any fiber that you want to try, you don't have to get the box. You're never committed to this subscription. You just sign up for the email and if you want the box, you can buy it. I ordered it on Tuesday and it was in my mailbox yesterday, Thursday. Insane turnaround. So here is some tar Targi, Targi. I'm terrible with pronunciation. And it's Dragon Knits. I'm guessing that's what they want me to discern from that. Dragon, I don't know. They have this is this one's super exciting to me. It's hemp, Tessa silk, Cory Dell, and bamboo. And now my nose is running. Sorry, it's gross to wipe it. And you also get like a lot of these vendors will put a discount code on their fiber. So if you like what they have, it is the cheapest way I have found to try a bunch of different stuff. Oh man, this is amazing. It's hemp. It's hemp, silk, and something else. What's so great about hemp? And then there's often cards that will talk about whatever you have, your fiber, and teach you about it. So yeah, this is hemp, Tessa silk, Cory Dell, and bamboo. Again, all these little fiber options. This one is insanely soft. Fox cashmere. Fox. Faux cashmere. That's a really cool feeling. That's, that's really... I'm scared to touch it too much. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So... I got this merino mulberry silk alpaca and angelina from broadway creations this says j and e designs this one says earthandsoul.com I'm going to pull these all out because I know you guys want to see them, right? Y'all can leave at any time. <laughs> Look at this. Like a little baby bat. That's going to be nice to spin. Ooh, I love these colors. I think it was like Jewel, Jewel Box or something was the theme this year. This month, not year. Month. Mulberry Silk, Alpaca Angelina, Merino. Put that one back in there. Put that one back in there. Look at this! Emerald Forest, hand dyed fiber, 23 micron Merino. Alexander's Crafts, hand dyed yarn and fiber. I love this little packaging. These little baby bats. In a little tube. Wild Delilah. More fiber. It's not saying on the label what this is. July 2016. Oh, some locks. And then this little nest. That's cute. I like these colors. Peachy, green, good summer tones. Oh, and it does. This month's bat may contain merino, cory dill, bamboo, sari silk, tessa silk, angelina, mohair locks, tess, 
water and more. I love these because each of these looks like enough to spin up like a little mini. And then you can knit a blanket, a cozy memory spinning box blanket. There's an idea, like Devin's breed study that he's doing, kind of the same thing. Except it's not, oh wow, that purple is, can you see that? I don't think you can. It's BFL comb top. It feels like this is going to be my favorite thing out of the box to spin. We'll see, because I say that a lot. And this is from the Kamaj Fiber Arts. And that's who, that's the company that puts all this together is Kamaj Fiber Arts. And this. It says, Black Opal, custom blended merino and bleached flax for your spinning pleasure. I got hemp and flax to spin, guys. That's super exciting. I want to touch it. I want to touch it. Now, this seems like a very substantial amount. I could probably get a project out of this. It's amazing. So, that is almost all. There's a few smaller things down in the box. I'm trying to shove this back in that I'll show you. Hopefully you can hear me over the road noise and the birds and the water. I don't know. I didn't do like a little test like you should. So there's also a little goat milk soap sample. Spinning box sticker. Yay! little tips, business cards, a bookmark, join the fun. You can pause it here and read this. Pause now. A little sample of wool wash. I got a ring pop. My daughter loves those. Loves them. And then she also puts in tissue paper so it feels like a present. And I got a little die to play with. That's all. That's I say that's all, but I mean let me show you guys how much you get and again if fifty dollars bye bye candy $50, guys. You cannot try this much fiber off of Etsy for the same price. It's You just couldn't do it. You would spend $50 on shipping and get like not as much fiber. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys, I, oh no, I didn't bring the other book. What can you do? So I have been, let me make sure, it, yeah, it's not in my bag kind of reading along, I say. I've been reading along in spirit, really. I have been reading Devil in the White City with the Engage Book Club. Um, Meredith from the Wool Gathering Podcast and Stephanie from the Milk Shed Blog Podcast have been hosting a read-along for the Devil in the White City, which is a true crime book about the murders at the World Fair. I really enjoy the book, but it's been slow going for me just because it's not what I want to read right now. Um, and I really enjoy the home story a lot more than 
the story about the architecture, but it's getting more interesting now that they're they're actually getting to the point where they're building the fair. So that's that's how far into the book I am. Like I think maybe about page 100. It's pathetic. This no this read along's been going on for a while. I should be further along. Um, but in the spirit of reading along, Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folks podcast is doing a sweep read along. The sweep series is kind of, she says, I haven't read anything about it, so I'm just going off what Jacqueline said, but it's along the same lines of a Harry Potter girl who finds out she's a witch type of series. She said it's no Harry Potter series, you know, it's not the most mentally stimulating series, if you will, but, you know, a good, cheesy, fun summer read, quick. She said it's a very easy series to get through, so I went to my local library, like you do. They didn't have it. They couldn't get it from one of the other libraries because they do their library sharing program. They could, but only three of the books, and I want all five, obviously. So I went to Half Price Books, my, all, my all-time second place to check after the library. They didn't have it. I went to Barnes & Noble. They didn't have it, and so I ended up ordering it off of Amazon. And normally, I would always go to Amazon before I go to Barnes & Noble, because I don't want to spend that much money on a new book that I'm going to read and it's going to sit on a shelf. However, I am all about instant gratification, and I want the book right now, not a week from now. And again, I'm going on vacation. I won't even be here next week. So when Amazon ships it, it will sit in my mailbox, sadly. But... All that to say, while I was at Barnes & Noble, I looked at the knitting books, like you do, and came away with this, Free Range Knitter. And I'm not very far into it, but I like it, and it gave me the idea to do a book swap. So if you have a book that you absolutely love, that you own, obviously, you love this book, you think everyone should read this book, but, you know... It sits on your shelf and you wouldn't mind parting with it. Let's do a book swap. Is that a good idea? Let me know what you think. If y'all be game to just swap a book out of your collection, it can be your favorite book. It can be whatever you want. I was thinking more along the lines of novels, but if y'all were also interested, we could probably talk about doing maybe knitting swap books or crochet swap books. I know I have some in my stash that are just going to sit there and maybe it's a book that you've been wanting for your library for years and years and I'm never going to use any of the patterns. You know, just just an idea, just throwing it out there. I'm going to create a thread, a book swap thread. And if you want to read along with any of the read-alongs I'm doing, again, it was the Engage Book Club. I'm reading Devil in the White City and the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. And that's that information for the first book is in the Wool Gathering podcast, and the information for the second book is in the Brooklyn Knit Folk Park podcast groups on Ravelry. Well, guys, I got through it. That's all I have to show y'all. I need more coffee. I need to get out of the hot sun. I need to get ready for work. Um, I only have to work two days, and then I get to go on vacation. We're going to the beach. I said that. We're going to go camp on the beach for a couple of days, and then we're going to go stay in a hotel in Houston and go to the museum. So I hope y'all have a great time doing whatever it is y'all do. Hope that you enjoyed what I had to show you. Thanks so much for joining me, as always. There's tons of podcasts out there to watch. I can't believe you guys sit down and watch me week after week. Keep commenting. I love to hear what you guys think and what you have to say. I don't think Atrella is going to have a segment this week. She hasn't, she's done some work. It's just, she said that she doesn't have enough progress to show. She might change her mind once I'm getting ready to upload this. So we'll see if she has a segment. If she doesn't, y'all will see her again. No worries. Thanks. See y'all next time.